song at the feast of Brugham Castle William Wordsworth high in the breathless hall of the minstrel sate, and once murmur mingled with the song. The words of ancient time I thus translate, a festal strain that hath been silent long, and person quo. From town to town, from tower to tower, the red rose is a glass and flower. Her thirty years of winter past, the red rose is revived at last. She lifts her head for endless spring, for everlasting blossoming, both roses flourish, red and white, in love and sisterly delight the two that were at strife are blended, and all old troubles now are ended. Joy. Joy to both. But most to her who is the flower of Lancaster. Behold her how she smiles today on this great throng, this bright array. Fair greeting doth she send to all from every corner of the hall. But chiefly from above the board, where sits in state our rightful lord, a Clifford to his own restored. Amperson quo. They came with banner, spear, and shield. And it was proved in Bosworth Field. Not long the avenger was withstood earth helped him with the cry of blood, St. George was for us and the might of blessed angels crowned the right. Loud voice the land has uttered forth, we loudest in the faithful north, our fields rejoice, our mountains ring, our streams proclaim a welcoming. Our strong abodes and castles see the glory of their loyalty. Amperson quo. How glad is Skipton at this hour though lonely, a deserted tower? Knight, squire, and yeoman, page and groom, we have them at the feast of Browham. How glad Pendragon though the sleep of years be on her. She shall reap a taste of this great pleasure, viewing as in a dream her own renewing. Rejoiced is brow, right glad, I deem, beside her little humble stream. And she that keepeth watch and ward her stayed Elyridan's course to guard. They both are happy at this hour, though each is but a lonely tower, but here is perfect joy and pride for one fair house by month's side, this day, distinguished without peer to see her master and to cheer him, and his lady mother dear. Amperson quo. Oh! It was a time forlorn when the fatherless was born give her wings that she may fly, or she sees her infant die. Sorts that are with slaughter wild hunt the mother and the child. Who will take them from the light? Yonder is a man in sight yonder is a house but where? No, they must not enter there. To the caves, and to the brooks, to the clouds of heaven she looks. She is speechless, but her eyes pray in ghostly agonies. Blissful Mary, mother mild, maid and mother undefiled, save a mother and her child. Amperson quo. Now who is he that bounds with joy on Carrick's side, a shepherd boy? No thoughts hath he but thoughts that pass light as the wind along the grass. Can this be he who hither came in secret, like a smothered flame? O'er whom such thankful tears were shed for shelter? and a poor man's bread. God loves the child. And God hath willed that those dear words should be fulfilled, the lady's words, when forced away the last she to her babe did say, Amperson quo. My own, my own, thy fellow guest I may not be. But rest thee, rest, for lowly shepherd's life is best. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Alas! When evil men are strong no life is good no pleasure long. The boy must part from Mosdale's groves, and leave Blincathara's rugged coves, and quit the flowers that summer brings to Glendermacon's lofty springs. Must vanish, and his careless cheer be turned to heaviness and fear. Give Sir Lancelot Threlkeld praise. Hear it, good man, old in days. Thou tree of covert and of rest for this young bird that is distressed. Among thy branches safe he lay and he was free to sport and play, when falcons were abroad for prey. Amperson quo. A recreant harp, that sings of fear and heaviness in Clifford's ear. I said, when evil men are strong, no life is good, no pleasure long, a weak and cowardly untruth. Our Clifford was a happy youth, and thankful through a weary time, that brought him up to manhood's prime. Again he wanders forth at will, and tends a flock from hill to hill. His garb is humble. Ne'er was seen such garb with such a noble mien. Among the shepherd grooms no mate hath he, a child of strength and state. Yet lacks not friends for simple glee, nor yet for higher sympathy. To his side the fallow deer came and rested without fear. The eagle, lord of land and sea, stooped down to pay him fealty. 
and both the undying fish that swim through bow scale tarn did wait on him. The pair were servants of his eye in their immortality, and glancing, gleaming, dark or bright, moved to and fro, for his delight. He knew the rocks which angels haunt upon the mountains visitant. He hath kenned them taking wing, and into caves where frees sing he hath entered, and been taught by voices how men lived of old. Among the heavens as I can see the face of thing that is to be. And, if that men report him right, his tongue could whisper words of might. Now another day is come, fitter hope, and nobler doom. He hath thrown aside his crook, and hath buried deep his book. Armor rusting in his halls on the blood of Clifford calls, quell the Scot, exclaims the lance bear me to the heart of France, is the longing of the shield tell thy name, thou trembling field. Field of death, where'er thou be, groan thou with our victory. Happy day, and mighty hour, when our shepherd, in his power, mailed and horsed, with lance and sword, to his ancestors restored like a reappearing star, like a glory from a far first shall head the flock of war. Amperson quo. Alas! The impassioned minstrel did not know how, by heaven's grace, this Clifford's heart was framed, how he, long forced in humble walks to go, was softened into feeling, soothed, and tamed. Love had he found in huts where poor men lie. His daily teachers had been woods and rills, the silence that is in the starry sky, the sleep that is among the lonely hills. In him the savage virtue of the race, revenge and all ferocious thoughts were dead, nor did he change. But kept in lofty place the wisdom which adversity had bred. Glad were the vales, and every cottage hearth. The shepherd lord was honored more and more. And, ages after he was laid in earth, Amperson Quo. The good Lord Clifford and Quo. Was the name he bore.